These are top 20 differences between newly released ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 and its predecessor ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 11, which essentially remained unchanged for three generations. Number 1. Speakers. They have been significantly improved and now they have full and rich sound and the bass is finally present. Side speaker grills are now gone and the sound is now being fired through the holes in the keyboard. There are no speaker holes at the bottom of this device and there are no speaker holes at the top of the device. Number two, the display. For the X1 Carbon Gen 12, Level 1 app offers even more premium panels with more OLED options and higher resolution screens. Number three, a refresh rate. For years, the refresh rate on ThinkPad has been capped to 60 Hz, but finally, this year, X1 Carbon comes with OLED panel with up to 120 Hz of refresh rate, which makes a huge difference while navigating around UI. Number 4. Bezels. Bezels have been significantly slimmed down and now you can appreciate a difference, especially if you put Gen 11 and Gen 12 next to each other. The difference is jarring. Number 5. Trackpad. For the first time ever on X1 series, we have an option of haptic trackpad. Now, the haptic trackpad is optional, so you can still configure your Gen 12 with the classic trackpad with three click buttons. But this new haptic trackpad is fantastic. The haptic feedback is great, the palm rejection is very effective and navigating around UI is joy. Typically I don't use Windows laptop with built-in trackpads, I prefer to use mouse, but on X1 Carbon Gen 12 and its haptic trackpad I can use this device solely with trackpad. Number 6. Power button. As you can see the power button has been moved from top of the keyboard area to the right side of the laptop next to ports. Previously Fingerprint reader has been built in within power button, but now there's a dedicated fingerprint reader on the keyboard area and your power button has been moved to the right hand side of the laptop. I'm not sure I like this change because now there is a permanent fingerprint reader on the keyboard area and your power button has been moved here, which can be accidentally pressed while handling the laptop. Number seven, ports. While ports didn't change, they have been rearranged. So as we see on the left hand side, now we have the two Thunderbolt ports and both USB-A, but in a different order. HDMI 2.1 has been moved to the right hand side and the nano SIM card slot is now on the left hand side. If you turn your laptops around, you can see that power button, headphone jack, USB-A and HDMI 2.1. The Kensington lock location remain unchanged. Number eight, hinges. Hinges are now color match, which helps with overall minimal design. Number nine, keyboard bumps. There are now significantly more keyboard bumps present, which improves overall accessibility of the Gen 12 and helps with the navigation around keyboard. Number 10, a fingerprint reader. So a fingerprint reader has been previously part of power button, but because power button has been moved to the right hand side of the laptop, there is now a dedicated spot for a fingerprint reader right here. It still works pretty well, but it's just gonna permanently occupy one key on the keyboard. Number 11, ThinkPad logo. ThinkPad logo on the palm rest area it's now debossed, which helps with overall minimalistic look. I do like this change, however, it might collect dirt over time. Number 12. Camera bump. Now, Lenovo first introduced this camera bump with ThinkPad Z series, and it's now also present on this new ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12. I don't mind this change because it has a function, it houses microphone array and also helps keep the lit as thin as possible while improving the overall camera resolution and because camera module is quite large. This is, in my opinion, very effective way of doing that. Number 13, anti-fingerprint coating. In past, I used to criticize ThinkPads because they look immaculate after unboxing, but just after a few hours of use, the palm rest area and the trackpad will be covered with fingerprints, smudges, and, and just finger oils. Pretty gross. Now with Gen 12, the coating has been improved and I have to say, even after using this laptop for two or three months now, I only had to wipe it two or three times, which is really, really good and it's a big improvement. Number 14, Wi-Fi 7 support. Wi-Fi 14 isn't only faster versus Wi-Fi 6E, but up to 46 gigabits per second versus 9.6 gigabits per second, but also improves channel bandwidth, multi-link operation, modulation, has a higher data density, latency, 
and also spectrum efficiency. So obviously it will take time for you to feel the benefit as the router in your office or in your home will be replaced with Wi-Fi 7 router. But down the line, this is really good in terms of future proofing. Number 15, battery. Battery is now much denser and it's also partially made of recycled materials, which is very good. Number 16, dimensions. Gen 12 is thinner with 14.96 millimeters versus 15.36 millimeters. It's also lighter, only 1.08 kilos versus 1.12 kilos. And it also has a smaller footprint as a side effect of thinner bezels. Number 17, higher screen to body ratio. Once again, Thanks to thinner bezels, the screen to body ratio has now improved and it now sits at 89.2% versus 86.23%. Number 18, recycled battery. Battery is now made of 90% post-consumer content, which is fantastic. Number 19, truck point quick menu. By double tapping truck point, you can access truck point quick menu for various shortcuts and other functions. However, I find it a bit counterproductive because the animation takes so long that it's quicker for me to simply go and find a setting I want to change the old way. And finally, number 20, cameras. Those were also upgraded. Gone is the ancient HD webcam, which means that now you can either get FHD with AR or new 8 megapixel AR. Well, that's it for this quick compare. Well, let me know if I missed anything. Thanks for watching and I will see you at the next one.